Okay, and we're back. Fable for 3. Nothing but restful nights. As for today's okay, first we are getting business, real close to the fighting the darkness here. The kingdom's economy finds itself in. Logan's policies always kept our cities on the edge of bankruptcy, and the panic caused by the fast approaching darkness has only exacerbated the situation. I'm afraid the only way to stop this slide into ruin is to bail out Bowerstone's financial institutions. You are such a giving, magnanimous person. Very well, I will make the arrangements. Life will be easier for your subjects for a while, but the treasury will not easily recover. I only hope we haven't thrown away our chances of survival. Of course, you could always replenish our gold supplies by donating from your personal funds. Shall we proceed with today's agenda? Kaelin, the representative for the Auroran people, has requested an audience with you. The court awaits in the throne room. Off to the throne room to do what a king needs to do. Majesty, the King of Albion. Today you must decide how much protection to grant Aurora. Kaylee will offer her proposal. Reva will stand against her. You may speak. Your Majesty, as you know, the threat from the deserts that surrounds my city has not diminished. The darkness could fall upon us once more at any moment. Aurora is part of your kingdom now, and I ask that you grant us protection. Build a desert outpost that can warn my people should the crawler attack. It shall allow us to leave the city in time and ensure the survival of your loyal subjects. Desert outpost? I've never heard of such nonsense. What should we do next? Erect taverns under the sea? Plant crops on mountain peaks? It is a foolhardy suggestion. Why should our valiant soldiers suffer sunstroke and chapped lips in a distant land when they could be protecting the people of this very city? Is it really worth risking the lives of all the people outside these walls? Okay. I always put Aurora the desert is under out there. It is our duty and, uh, to build this outpost. Treasury's got Kaelin's nine million. I got two, final. three. A military I'm not really sweating money. Shall be erected in the deserts that surround Aurora. We shall not forget this gesture. Aurora thanks you. Ah, <laughs> you are a whimsical monarch, and that is why you are so beloved. Very well. It shall be done. Reaver Industries is proud to present an exotic tale of romance, adventure, and sand. The Desert Outpost. Bring forth Sabine of the Mist Peak Dwellers. Today, you decide on the fate of Mispeak, home of the dwellers, Your Majesty. Sabine will speak for his people and their land. Reba will dispute his cause. You may speak. I come here seeking nothing but what was promised me and my people. But you pledged to restore our home mountains and our right to dwell in them. We have fulfilled our end of the bargain. We have paid with our lives to sit you on that throne. Now you must fulfill your end. Undo the damage your brother did to our land, and our agreement shall be satisfied. Your Majesty, this sounds both an unnecessary expense and an impudent demand. 
What value is there in a few? I always keep my promise to this beam. Snow and rock. This is not the time to indulge some idyllic fantasy. Those forests are a resource, and we are in dire need of resources. I propose. I will keep my promise to the dwellers. Your brothers the Miss Peak Mountains will be what restored. Nature offers so Miss Peak shall Say become a protected region, the and the dwellers shall be granted authority over its assets. forests and resources. You are true to your word and your honor. The dwellers will stand by you till the end. Forests of Mist Peak are our greatest national treasure, and now, thanks to Riva Industries, they have returned to their past splendor. Dwellers, birds, and bunnies are free to roam, laugh, and kill each other as nature intended. Who needs all that number anyway? Happy anniversary, your majesty. One year as king of Albion. Doesn't time just fly? To celebrate this momentous day, I have prepared some fantastic events. First, you will stand still for several hours while a local artist paints your portrait. Then, you will choose the 47 varieties of flowers you wish to be cast at your feet as you parade through the city. Oh, and you will need to sign thousands of autographs, of course. Let's see, you will also be... The day has come, King. It is time for you to face the darkness. But you will do so in your true form. Over the past year, you have made decisions that reveal your nature, and which have affected the lives of all your subjects. You have done what many would have thought impossible. Not only have you raised an army to protect your people, but you have accomplished this while acting as a noble, benevolent, and popular ruler. But you are more than a king. You are a hero. You are Albion's champion, its protector. This coming battle is the reason you had to take Logan's place. Only you can defeat the creature that dwells in the shadows. If you do not, all your efforts will have been in vain. Now go. Do what you were born to do. The darkness has reached Powerstone. Reports indicate that our defenses were able to hold off the worst of the first attack. But if we don't act quickly, even the armies we prepared for this day will not be enough. We have to get out on the streets, now! Today we fight for Albion! Focus on yourself! Defend the city with your lives! Yes! No armor is okay. You, is We're gonna go ahead and break the video. Oh, look at my sanctuary. Full of the darkness. Alright.